Hello everyone and welcome back to The Scott Scheme with McAllister College head football coach Tony Jennison. The Scott Scheme is a program that gives you, the fans, the opportunity to ask the McAllister coach questions about the Scots, football or sports in general, or just seek Coach Jennison's wisdom about life events. In this month's episode, the coach talks about team updates and recruiting with us. He shares his insights about what he thinks about the Ivy League banning tackling during the regular season. And we learn if he believes that Coach Davies could catch a pass against him. So let's get right to the Scott scheme. So let's welcome back Coach Jennison for this month. Coach, let's first of all begin with McAllister Fighting Scott team updates. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate you having me. Um, right now we're in the weight room, working very hard. I know our strength coaches have um, really been impressed with the work ethic of our young men. They're working out four days a week. Uh, we actually get together with, for a team lift on Sunday evenings, and then uh, we have uh, smaller lifts throughout the course of Tuesday and Thursday where they sign up for a time that works with their individual schedule. And then we get together on Friday mornings as well and are doing um, some more competitive drills together, uh, less in the weight room and more of competitive stuff, uh, tug, of rope, uh, tug of war type of things or running stadium stairs, that type of stuff. So um, again, all indications, uh, we can't, I, I, I can't be at the workout, so I haven't been, uh, but uh, all indications from our strength coaches is that they've been really impressed with the work ethic of the young men on our team. Uh, it seems like we've got a very good feeling on our team right now and they're working really hard to be successful for 2016 season. You had a couple of guys who had surgery as the season ended last season. Where is their status at right now? Uh, they're doing well. I'm trying to think about, back about uh, everybody. But, uh, yeah, almost everybody's back in terms of uh, being an off-season conditioning program now. We only have a couple of individuals who are still dealing with some injury situations, and we're trying to get on top of that. Uh, so they've been in contact with our training staff, Paula Natvig, and uh, she's got uh, different exercises that they need to do for the rehabilitation and they've been working on that but uh, again there's only uh, I, I believe one or maybe two individuals that are still in that uh, situation and how is recruiting going for you so far uh, recruiting it's, it's kind of a quiet time right now because we're in this lull when uh, people aren't really sure uh, if they're going to be admitted and they're waiting for financial aid so here at McAllister we, we've done our, our two early decision periods and we're in regular decision now, but there's a little bit of a, a wait. Uh, the application deadline is January 15th, and they've got really till about February 1st to, to finish off their applications, but, but then they wait until uh, basically mid to late March uh, before finding out if they're admitted and then getting their financial aid package at that point so it's a little bit quiet right now uh, we're continuing to call families and, and talk to them about um, uh, about McAllister our football program and really uh, the next steps in the process which which again is just waiting around for admission notification and and or financial aid so uh, again pretty quiet time we, we have started getting going on the 2017 class and uh, it's pretty exciting. We've got a, a, a lot of interest, which you always do early on. And really our job now as coaches is to, to, sif uh, to sift through all, all the information and really try to figure out who's serious about McAllister. And to me, serious means you're going to come for a visit and or apply. Um, yeah, really and apply, uh, visit and apply at some point. And uh, we've been having phone co conversations with, with a number of 2017 grads already. And uh, I've actually seen a couple uh, in person for visits um, and or meeting with them in school at this point uh, just recently. So it uh, seems like we're off to a good start, but busy as ever. And it doesn't really ever slow down. That's pretty impressive that you have juniors that are already coming to McAllister to see. Uh, it's it's pretty normal that that's uh, about the time frame. Uh, so we really start uh, about January first, really more or closer to February. Some of our staff get going um, late in uh, late last year or in January. Uh, for me, because of the my focus remains more on the current seniors. Um, I really get going on, on February 1st to transitioning a little bit to juniors. Again, I think a couple other members of our staff do it more so than I do just because my focus is on the seniors. But um, it's really, it's really kind of how it works at, at high-ranking schools like McAllister that you kind of need to be a little earlier in the process uh, because the, the really talented football players that are looking for good schools 
um, are typically looking a little bit earlier. So uh, we've got our junior day coming up on April 22nd, and we've already have a number of young men that have committed to coming that to that. Um, and we've got a couple here from Minnesota, I think one or two from Wisconsin, one from Illinois, and I know we have one from Maryland as well. Um, and, I'm, and I haven't even looked this week um, or last week, actually, now I think about it, as to any updates on, on who will be coming. But uh, we do anticipate a pretty good uh, pretty good crowd for that uh, Friday, April 22nd. Now that you're into March, I would assume we're getting close to spring practice time. We are. Spring practices are coming up. We'll, we will begin on April 6th, and we will practice uh, basically three days a week for three weeks. Uh, we're, we're, we have 20 hours of competition that we can use and uh, we use part of that in the weight room and uh, we're also going to do something a little different uh, we're going to try some uh, leadership training character education whatever you want to call it uh, we've got to get that organized still and uh, i still need to talk to our players about it it's something that they don't know about but we're going to pilot it with uh, probably our leadership council and see what their thoughts are on it if it's something we want to bring to the full team so uh, it's something that uh, i've actually got to get organized and then, but by the end of this week so something that's going to have my uh, pretty close attention uh, here the rest of the day. What do you try to accomplish during spring practice with your players? You know, really review our schemes, um, you know, get everybody together again, let them run around, hoot and holler. I, I want it to be fun. I, I don't want it to be a drag. So our practices um, could be longer. They're not. We want it to be um, you know, really just kind of a taste of football, not too much, not overbearing. We want the young men in our program to have time to have you know have time to study and have time to have a social life so um, I, again we're pretty intense in the fall we don't want it to be overbearing in the spring really it's uh, again an opportunity for us to review our schemes and, and have a little fun out there uh, work on the camaraderie of our team and togetherness and that type of thing but we will introduce some new schemes and some new ideas I know offensively we're making some adjustments this year even how we uh, call plays the you know how we get from point a to b is going to be a little different so um it, it, it will be it will be a lot a lot of changes offensively but uh, uh defensively probably a little bit less before we head into our fan questions uh last month we talked about zach hauser having mm -hmm. a pro day tell us a little bit about how that went for him yeah on monday of this week uh zach and uh, myself and Marshall Mullenbach and a couple of his senior buddies, Zandy Stoll and Trey Maroka, met us over there. But uh, Marshall and I and Zach, we met here early in the morning and went over to the Gopher Pro Day where, where Zach was able to run in front of NFL scouts. And uh, he ran a couple of 40s over there. I thought it looked good. He certainly, um, you know, the concern is when you come from a small school, is that you're not going to look like you fit but uh he definitely fit with the crowd that was over there and i actually thought he ran pretty well um but uh now it's kind of the waiting game we wait and see if if anybody has interest i'm hopeful that you know a, a person that's 300 pounds that uh, runs the way he does that uh, someone's going to have interest in wanting to learn a little bit more about him so we'll see what happens it's uh it's a waiting game at this point so let us head into our fan questions. First comes Dylan from Minneapolis who'd like to know, do you find that there are certain areas or certain schools where you build relationships that make it easier to find players that fit the McAllister requirements? No question about it. In fact, just recently we completed a, a project, uh, we called it a national priority list where we reviewed every state in in, in America and basically looked at every school in the country date well we looked at data and, and tried to find the schools that had a tendency to send students to McAllister uh, so we actually reviewed some of our admissions data with help of our admissions office and found out which schools uh, had more interest in McAllister which schools had you know X number of applications and from those applications you know how many people were admitted and then how many people deposited how many students actually came to McAllister and with that information and uh, our history as well we completed a, a national priority list so uh, I've actually got the, the document now I love it because I can click on any state in America and I can find uh, it depends on the state some states it might be three schools in the entire state that have you know that have the type of um, you know, history of sending students to to schools like McAllister um, that we like uh, in, in other states, it's, you know, 20 or more. So kind of depends upon the area, but uh, we actually used it last week. Uh, I had recruiting trips 
in in Denver and in Houston area in Texas and uh, we use these national priority lists because I went out and saw uh, some uh, I went out and saw seniors the 2016 grads that are our top recruits for us uh, but saw a couple of juniors as well and also spent my time heading to these top schools just to introduce myself to the coaches to make a connection and to give them a little bit more information about McAllister. So um, a couple schools that we, you know, like the Denver area, we went to Cherry, I went to Cherry Creek High School, the Kent Denver School, uh, East High School in Denver is another good one. And uh, there are a couple of others and and uh, did the same in, in Houston, Texas. So finding again, what schools have a tendency to have <laughs> students that are uh, very strong academically that have high test scores and want to go off to Ivy League type schools uh, those are the schools that we need to be in touch with and and uh, so yes we certainly um, do find that it's important to make those types of relationships leave it to McAllister to find a brilliant way to focus in on certain uh, schools <laughs> I don't know that's brilliant it's just uh, it just makes sense Lucas from Des Moines would like to know, do you know what the standard admission requirements are for a student to be eligible to go to McAllister? Um, that's a tricky question simply because it, it really depends upon a, a lot of different factors. One thing that I really like about McAllister is we're going to look at a student's entire profile to determine if they're admissible to McAllister and it's really done by our, our admissions office our, our coaches don't have anything to do with it but um, you know we've seen I've seen people here with really great test scores. I remember a young man a couple of years ago with a 34 ACT that was denied. He was a really strong football player and he didn't get admitted even with a 34 ACT, which a 36 is a perfect ACT. Uh, and most people are shocked by that. But, um, you know, for whatever reason, uh, there was something in his profile. Maybe it was his essays. Maybe they felt he could have challenged himself a, a little bit better with his curriculum or, uh, you know, maybe his grades weren't strong enough. Uh, but I've seen people with lower test scores get admitted because they are taking all APs and honors courses and they're really challenging themselves academically. And maybe their test scores are a little bit lower, but they've got, you know, they're ranked number third in their, in their class or whatnot. So it really just depends upon uh, upon the individual and you know uh, when we're looking for people we want students that are at or near the very top of their class and obviously we're hopeful that they have strong test scores to go with it but um, yeah if you're not at or near the top of your class then uh, we're probably not even going to be talking to someone um, with that being said you know also you need to challenge yourself academically you know McAllister wants students to basically have four years of math science foreign language English and social science and so that equates to 20 solid courses in those areas and uh, certainly that's the standard and that's what we're looking for if, if you're lacking in foreign language it's going to decrease your chances of getting admitted so um, you know we're looking for players that have challenged themselves academically with with a strong curriculum and have had success within that curriculum. Our next question comes from James from Monona who'd like to know, when you were looking for players, do you recruit looking for players to fit a certain scheme? Not really. Um, we just look for good football players, you know, good people that are good football players and, and passionate about football, serious about their academics. Uh, doesn't really matter to me what type of scheme they came from or anything like that. You know, I, here at McAllister, because of who we are as an institution, we only bring in about 20 recruits per year. We can't go to a, a regular high school football game and say, oh, we want that guy because he fits in our scheme. We want that guy because he fits well and that guy also. It doesn't work that way. We need to we need to find who's got the, the, the grades, the test scores, the, the curriculum that, that's very strong and then we recruit those individuals so we're kind of stuck with who we get we don't again we can't just go out and say we need this need that uh, you know think about um, two three years ago uh, when we had Sam Marshall and Tim Newman on our team they were both strong tight ends for us. Sam ended up being our team MVP but uh, our, or I'm sorry our offensive MVP whatever it was uh, both great great young men, uh, really good football players, and uh, having two tight ends in the field, we, we call it 12 personnel, one back, two tight ends. Uh, our 12 personnel package was our best offensive package on the field. Uh, both Sam and Tim graduated that year. The following year, you didn't see us with tight ends on the field much because uh, we just didn't have the same type of players at that position as we had the year before. So we had to be flexible enough 
to be able to adjust our schemes to fit with the talent we had. So, you know, I credit our, our coaches. I think I, I think both our, our coordinators uh, on offense and defense, Mark Davies on offense, Marshall Mullenbach in defense, do a very good job of adjusting schemes to fit our personnel. And so that's where as coaches, I think we have to do a good job. So again, it doesn't really benefit us to go look for certain people who play in certain schemes. Uh, we just have to be flexible enough to use the athletes when they get here uh, to maximize their talents, if that makes sense. Do you find that there's a base scheme that you work off of? Or, cause, yes. Because I, I look at a couple of years ago, you have like a Samson as quarterback. C clearly, the guys you had last year were not the same kind of athletic mm -hmm. talent as him. So do you then completely readjust the offense and build structurally differently? Yeah, I, I, I think we tweak it. I think we kind of know a little bit about who we are and how we want to do things. But we tweak it a little bit to take advantage of, of people's talents. Um, you know, so, you know, losing a guy like Zach Hauser next year, it, it, we don't have <laughs> another 6'3", 290-pound person, 300 pound person uh, that can run the way he does. Uh, most teams in America don't. So we, you know, we might have to adjust our defensive schemes just a little bit. Now we're not going to make a complete departure from who we are, but uh, you know, it's not, I, I, I would think it's very probable that we'll make some adjustments uh, because not everyone could do exactly what Zach did. So again, I, I, that's where we as coaches just need to be, I think, on top of things. Owen from Minnetonka would like to know, who do you see as the hardest person from your senior class to replace? Yeah, Zach Hauser. <laughs> um, certainly there's other people we're going to miss. Um, and there's, I mean, Zandy is a, I thought he was the best back in the league last year. I thought it was a travesty that he wasn't first team all conference. I think the coaches really missed that one. Um, but, um, you know, we do have a, a very good stable of backs behind him. And I think that they're going to do a very good job in Zandy's absence. Uh, you know, losing Joe Walker at the tight end position is a, a big loss for us because Joe was a, a really good player, very solid. And just who he was as a person and a leader within our program is, is going to be a loss. And, and uh, you know, the young men we have behind him are all younger and, uh, you know, haven't really... Um, proven anything yet. Now I believe they will because they're working really hard. Lawson Bush and, and Luke Arsenault uh, in particular. Um, but, you know, so there, there are people we're going to miss, but I believe we have people coming up behind them that, you know, have similar types of talents um, or, or you know, that can replace them. But we don't have another 6'3", 300 pound person that runs a sub five flat 40. We just, we just don't have that. So, uh, so yeah, Zach Hauser is clearly the person that's going to be hardest for us to replace. William writing from Los Angeles would like to know, will you have someone recruiting in the Los Angeles area anytime soon? My family and I would love to meet someone from your staff. <laughs> yes, we will be in LA for the West coast elite camp. Um, the dates on that, I believe are the beginning of June, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, uh, we've, we've, uh, the, it, it, the West Coast Elite Camp is something that's starting this summer. It's led by John Pappas, who is uh, a great coach. Uh, he's, he's retired now, but he was the coach of Brown, Buckingham, and Nichols uh, out in the Boston area, uh, which is a, a strong private school out there, really strong football program. Uh, Matt Bonazzoli for us, uh, one of our running backs who we're expecting big things of uh, next year now that he's healthy. He's been uh, he's had some uh, injury issues his first couple of years, but, um, but Matt played for Coach Pappas out there, and Coach Pappas runs the New England Elite Camp, which has been a big thing for, uh, uh, in terms of finding prospects that are uh, serious about their academic serious about football and, and coach Pappas is starting a West Coast elite camp this um, this summer so we're going to be out there working that as well so we'll be out there uh, this June and um, if uh, if there's if you're recruiting you're interested in McAllister College please complete our online questionnaire send us emails send us your video your transcript all that good stuff and uh, we'll definitely be in touch with you that would be awesome Jim from Bloomington would like to know, what impresses you most about the student athletes you work with? To me, it's really their commitment to a balanced life uh, in terms of uh, they're working extremely hard in the weight room right now with the strength and conditioning. Coach Murray is not easy. He's really challenging them. And, and I think uh, given, given some of the challenges we had last year uh coach murray's pushing our players harder than he's pushed in a long time 
and they're responding. Uh, they're working very hard. They're not complaining, and um, it's going to make our, our football program better. But not only that, but the young men in our program work extremely hard academically. Uh, McAllister College is a very rigorous academic institution. Uh, our players could go to places where they don't have to work as hard academically, where they would have more free time on their hands. But they choose a place like McAllister because they know the benefits down the road. They know what this education can do for them and, and where it can take them. And um, that's just the type of, of young men they are. They, they want the very best. They want that challenge because they have high expectations of themselves as people, as students, as athletes. And to me, that's the that's what impress, continually impresses me all the time. And uh, when we have young men who don't fit here, um, it's, it's because I, I, usually they, they don't want to challenge themselves in all aspects of their life. But the young men that we do have here, um, they're tough. And uh, to me, it's that toughness that's, that's going to take them very far in life. The, the same toughness that they display in football is the same toughness that they display in their in their in their academic life and in their social life. Uh, they're always doing their very best and, and that's what impresses me the most. Do you find that that is kind of inspirational to the coaching staff as well? For me it is. Um, you know, uh, they're the reason that I stay at a place like McAllister, not that there are, <laughs> not, that, not, not that anybody's knocking down my door. Which they should anything, be. <laughs> but they're not, uh, um, to have me coach at different places, but I'm not interested. You know, I. I I feel like I was that type of person uh, when I was their age, and I feel like I still am in terms of challenging myself to want to do my very best to, as a as a husband, as a father, as a as a coach, as a you know, just a, a person. Um, but I feel like that's who I was in college as well, even though I don't didn't go to uh, as as, uh, as rigor uh, rigorous of an academic institution as they're at. But um, but it is inspiring to me because. Um, you just, uh, it, to me, you have to respect it when, when they're doing their very best in all aspects of their life. Next comes from Trish from Madison, who asks, one of the things that I loved about this past season was seeing a lot of your former players come to games. How important do you think that is that former players, or that current players see that kind of support from your former players? You know, I, I'm not sure that they recognize it or see it. Um, I know it's extremely important to me as a head football coach because it means that the young men who've left our program are still invested in it. And hopefully that says that they had a very meaningful, rewarding experience and it was something that they take great pride in. The fact that they want to come back to our football program and, and to see how we're doing, that they still care. Um, hopefully the young men in our program recognize that and recognize that you know how much this experience will mean to them after four years. Um, you know, but you know it's hard for me to gauge uh, if, if they if they really see that or not but uh, hopefully they do and hopefully again it, it, it means be, it means that uh, the young men have had a really great experience within our football program next we have a question from Glenn from st. Paul he says coach how do you feel about the idea that the Ivy League is implementing where there is no tackling during practice during the season do you see this becoming the norm um, yeah maybe I, I really don't know what's gonna happen at different levels quite honestly though I I, I think most colleges operate in this fashion um, you know it's very rare that we tackle people in practice as well I know that there are some years there's been a couple years where we haven't tackled one person in practice uh, now this year I think we did do a few minutes of, of uh, live scrimmaging you know maybe early in camp but is it I, I'm very confident I don't have the data in front of me but I'm very confident it was less than less than an hour and probably less than even 30 minutes is probably closer to 15 or 20 minutes all throughout the season so it's it, it again I think it's pretty rare I think you can simulate some of that stuff uh, you know working with dummies or or in different ways and, and we do that as well so I I wouldn't be surprised if if more places move to those types of regulations but honestly I think a lot of college football programs are already doing that uh, right now Jody from St. Paul asks do you have a favorite memory of Peyton Manning now that he is retired? <laughs> uh, Jody, I wish I did. Uh, you know, I again, I don't really watch NFL football as much as I used to. Shoot, when I was in college, I knew every player of every team. I knew what was going on. Loved the NFL draft and all that good stuff. And um, I really don't have much time for it anymore. So, you know, I think if I, you know, I really enjoyed that uh, he won the Super Bowl this year and he's able to retire that way. Because um, I've always thought that. Uh, 
uh, he's a class act and whatnot. I know that uh, I think it was my senior year of college football. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated for the college football preview. So I think we were seniors the same year together, which is a little bit strange. It might have been a year apart. It's hard to remember, but I thought it was the same year that he was a senior at Tennessee that I was a senior in college as well. But um, I think maybe, you know, his winning the two Super Bowls, the first one with the Colts, um, you know, was exciting to see because there. I remember at that time there were a lot of naysayers that he could never win a big game and this and that, which is completely ridiculous. Um, so I was happy to see that. But other than that, I really don't, you know, I can't think of a play or anything like that. I uh, just think of, you know, winning the Super Bowls, which hopefully will quiet some of the critics. Tom, who knows what a big baseball fan you are, asks, who do you see winning the World Series this year? Ooh, it's a little too early, Tom. I've got until April 1st, don't I, to make that pick? i got to <laughs> see what happens in spring training here. But, um, you know, I think last year I picked the Nationals and they disappointed, but I think they've got a new manager this year. So I'd, I'd probably say that maybe the Nationals... Uh, in the National League, um, I'd be pretty high on. And maybe the Blue Jays, I think their lineup is pretty scary, uh, all the hitters they have in the American League. So uh, ask me again in April, and I'll give you my final picks. But right now, I'm probably leaning towards the Nationals in the National League or maybe the Blue Jays in the American League. Our last question comes from Joel from St. Paul, who shows that he's kind of mean but accurate in this question. He says, I hear you say in a previous show that Rob could not catch a pass against you. True. Well, he is out of shape, but what about <laughs> Coach Davies? Could you cut him out? Well, Mark is in pretty good shape, and I don't know that that would be fair because I was a corner. Mark was a tight end. They don't typically spread out those guys. I think they typically want a safety on them. Um, I don't know. That would be pretty tough these days. But back in my playing days, I'd feel confident that I could do that. Uh, now, if they threw one up to him on a jump ball, that might be a little bit uh, harder for a guy like me being a little bit uh, shorter, or as Coach Rosenberry says, blessed with pad level. Um, but um, I would say back in my heyday, yes, I would have full confidence that I would shut him down. Excellent. Thanks for joining us this month, Coach. Thanks for your time, Rob. We want to thank Coach Jennison for joining us on the Scots game this month. If you have your own questions you'd like to ask the McAllister coach, please send them to us at Tony Jennison at MinorLeagueSportsSupport.com. That's Tony Jennison at MinorLeagueSportsSupport.com. Just as a reminder, during the offseason, we'll be recording the show once a month on the first Thursday of every month. So please have your questions to us by the Wednesday prior to that. I want to thank Coach Jennison for joining us again, and thank you for joining us this month. We look forward to seeing you next month on the Scots game.